Praise you to the Lord on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, it is. Let's be glad and rejoice in it. And be ye thankful again on today for all that the Lord has done. All that the Lord will do. We continue to thank Him, praise Him, and continue to lift up His holy name. Even though we here at the Gift from God Worship Center, we are aware of the spiritual warfare that we are about to encounter. And if we don't keep our focus on Christ, we also will be a part of the great falling away from Christ. And some might even know it as the great falling away from the church. So we are dealing with right now here in the end times, the spirit of evil. Mm -hmm. The spirit of wickedness. The spirit that comes to kill steal and destroy right here in the USA right here in Alberta Virginia so we continue to thank the Lord press towards the marks of the hand call of God and that he be able to cover us continuously keeping our mind on Christ as we go through the valley of the shadow of death here in the end of the age. So before we get started, if they have some of the have anything on their heart, mind, soul, or spirit that they would like to acknowledge on today before we get started with our lesson, you may do so at this time. We're not gonna keep y'all long today. I'm just Go finish off my uh, class on the great evil. The great evil that's among men on today. Will there be an author? Praise be to the most high God. Praise be to the Most High God. I give thanks, praise, and honor to my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. I thank the Lord God on this day, for he was able to open some doors early this morning. And I thank the Lord God for the doors that are open up always have to be about finances, or any type of material things. It can be just for the building of the body of Christ. And I thank the Lord God for the ministry that he has given to me. I thank him for the voice that he has put in my person that I am able, you know, to give what thus says the Lord. And while I'm doing that, the Lord also ministers to me. So I'm thankful on today that, you know, in all things, we have to trust the Lord. Not just in some of the things, not just when trouble come, or not just when you're worried about things. So like um, Pastor Pearson always says, if you're gonna worry, don't pray. But if you're gonna pray, don't worry. So in all things, we have to trust the Lord God. And I thank him that, you know, he said in his word that if we ask, we will receive. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door will be open if we ask in the name of Jesus. If we ask in the name of Jesus and we don't doubt. So I thank the Lord God for ministering to me this morning that I may, was able to minister to another. And I pray that he continues to build up this ministry that's in me, that I may be bolder, you know, even more bold when it comes to the word of the Lord because, you know, you never know when your opportunity is there and you're supposed to go and do what thus says the Lord. And you know, you gotta be faithful in that thing and, and don't be afraid 
to say what you got to say or do what you got to do, you know, to move closer to the Lord. And I, I also want to just share this this thing that, that the Lord gave me in my spirit. That, you know, when we're trying to get to know him, you know, is um, the scenario he gave me is like, if you meet a person, <laughs> if you meet a person and, and you, you want to um, start dating or something like that to that effect. So if you meet a person and you find interest in them, so what you do? You try to get to know them. So the Lord is saying, this is what I want my people to do with me. He wants us to get to know him, to get to know his ways, you know, to get to know more about him and to find out what we have to do to be in the right way and to stay in the right way. So this is the same thing that the Lord is asking us to do is to get to know him, you know, and to know him is to love him. So, you know, I love the Lord on this day and I thank him and I praise him and I bless him. And that's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Just like going on the date when you're getting to, just like you're getting to know your husband or your wife you know yeah. you, you find out their characteristics you find out things about them you know mm -hmm. you you feed on that so you because you want to know more you build a desire mm -hmm. to know more right. about them so that's what the lord gave me on this morning amen hey, yeah. well, most time most people not want to try to get to know a person nowadays because of the head of the age mm -hmm. i'm not going to spend time with you trying to get to know you if you don't have money. Mm -hmm. If you don't have money, I'm not gonna waste my time trying to get to know you. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of the Antichrist on today. And people are not gonna get to know God mm -hmm. unless there's some kind of financial benefit mm -hmm. or if there's some type of financial profit or gain then they might say, I want to get to know God. Mm -hmm. Or if they see someone else prospering mm -hmm. financially with money, then they might say, I would like to get to know God. Mm -hmm. But people waking up in the morning wanting to get to know, to get to know God is rare. Mm -hmm. Unless they're going through something difficult, real difficult. Situation, and that makes it special. Yeah, <laughs> and that's just the heart of people mm -hmm. on today. That if they're not going through something, and it's it even could be, I guess I'm gonna say what I'm seeing with the people, and I'm trying to watch myself also, mm -hmm. because you go get to a place financially and not call on the name of the Lord in a moment. You can get there too. Finances sometimes can destroy you mm -hmm. and keep your mind off Christ. Lord, I try to remind myself daily mm -hmm. of the things that the Lord has blessed me with. Mm -hmm. So I had to look the other day just to look down at the things I was asking for, and they are there. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep reminding yourself yeah. that God works in the heart of man and that's the press pastor mm -hmm. that's the press how you got to press your way you got to right. keep reminding yourself that's the press right you know it was not by your workers mm -hmm. all right let's go ahead anything else before we get started let me sing a song okay, go ahead, <laughs> if you want to know where I'm going I'm going. 
that once we depart from this place, we are led to another. Mm -hmm. And we thank the Lord God on today for encouraging us and making us aware of the life after death. Mm -hmm. So we praise him and we thank him and we rejoice at all times about our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And we thank you on today, God, for all that you have done, prepared for us. And now we have such a simple task. We have a simple task. And that's to remain faithful to remain thankful to remain in the name of Jesus the Christ until his second coming or until the Lord call us home to glory so on today, we still gonna finish up our second part on this great evil that we have been talking about in our last lesson. We're talking about a great evil. And I know sometimes a lot of stuff we talk about here, you might not hear people talking about in other ministries, but we have to unturn all stones. We have to flip over all rocks. We have to cover all subjects, whether they are likable to you, not likable to you, you like them. Whatever the spirit might bring upon you, that do not hinder the Holy Ghost from giving what does says the Lord to the men and women of God, that they may be the mouthpiece, because the gospel must go throughout the whole earth before the end, even if I'm just to make you aware of your sin nature. And hopefully that a few words might pull you out of the fire. So on today, we're going to get right back started with the uh, great evil on today. This will be our second part, unless the Lord give us something else. But we're going to go quickly. I don't have much on today to finish this, but we're going to go quickly to Genesis chapter 19. And if you are listening to my voice on today, if you call yourself a Christian, and like I say, a lot of times, a lot of the stuff we teach here, it is near to come. Everything we teach here is will come to pass. So a lot of times I'm prophesizing preparedness. I'm prophesizing get ready for that that's about to come to your eyesight. If you are a Christian on today, Prepare your eyes for you will not be raptured out of this thing until the end of the grace. Get prepared with your eyes what you are about to witness. We're going to Genesis chapter 19 real quick. 
if you are a Christian on today, you may actually witness the great evil that Lot saw. We reading about it. We're trying to put ourselves in a place and trying to imagine what the people in the Bible could have been going through as they came in contact with the thing that we are reading about. So what I'm saying to you on today, if you are a Christian, you may just get to witness. Now a lot of people are going to see it, but they're not going to witness it because they don't have spiritual eyes. They're going to see it, they won't witness it because it's pleasure to them. So your pleasure is the thing that I might get to witness to say that's abomination mm -hmm. or it's a disgrace. Or I might say it's spots in your garments. So you may actually get to witness before the second coming of Jesus Christ, before the rapture, the what? The great evil. We call it in scripture the great tribulation. This thing you may just actually witness. Scary. But prepared. And that's why I'm saying we got to get that arm on. We can't keep talking about scripture. You got to have your fruits of the spirit. You got to put on your armor to be able to endure this thing. You got to be in church 50 years and just measly. Get a portion of the faith walk that we're talking about. Let's thank you, Skip. Genesis chapter 19. We'll start with verse 1. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at uh -huh. even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Two witnesses. Two witnesses come from heaven because of this great evil. Because they wanted to do what? They wanted to put on what? Their eyes. They wanted to see those things. They wanted to see how evil and Lot was sitting there, he was doing what? A servant of Christ, he sitting there what? Witnessing this thing. So the angels come down, they said what? We have to see this thing also. Read that again for the minister. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom. At uh -huh. even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. Uh -huh. As soon as he saw him, he rose up. Because he knew this was unusual. Mm -hmm. He rose up and said, no, I'm going to go and, and, and meet them. Because first of all, if I see you coming, knowing what's going on, I'm trying to gather you quickly. I'm trying to gather you quickly, trying to get you somewhere where I feel like you might be what? Safe. Even though you're angel, I know what's going on out here in this world. I'm a street minister. <laughs> so I'm trying to gather you together so you don't go out here and be a what? So you don't witness this thing. Mm -hmm. You know how people see the police coming and they uh -huh. say, uh-oh, they're going to get somebody. They're going to get somebody. <laughs> Give me the next one. Verse 1, and there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Verse 2, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in. Turn what? Turn in. He said, what? I'm going to stop you 
quickly. I want to stop you quick. I don't want you to get to this thing. With, with these folks doing out here, I don't even want you to see it. No, turn quickly. Turn, I don't want you to see I know y'all might have can't. I don't want you to see the evil. Turn quickly into my house. I got to get you off the street. I don't want you out here because you wasn't there my what? My company. So I don't even want you to witness this foolishness. This filteredness that's going on out here in the street. I could imagine somebody like this in New York or Chicago or Sin City. No, turn into my house now. You don't want to see this stuff out here. You don't want to be out here dealing with these folks with this filteredness that they do. Mm -hmm. Read the next one. Read it again. Verse Give me two. two. Verse two. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in. Uh -huh. I pray you. He what? I pray you. He said, I'm begging you. I'm begging you to turn in now. You out here in the street, turn in now to my house. I pray you. I'm begging you not to be out here. What I'm trying to tell you about this great tribulation, if you listen to an old saints, there's at least 60, 75, they said they hope they'd be dead when those things take place. Folks said they'd rather be dead. What's going to take place in great tribulations? They don't want to see this great evil that I'm talking about on today. Give me the number two again. Verse two. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night. Tarry all night long. I don't want you to go out here in these streets at all. Tarry here when? All, all night. I tell these folks go back in. Too in there. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep you safe from this filthiness out here. Mm -hmm. The whole place have become defiled. Mm -hmm. The whole area. If somebody not running upon you for to have a sexual encounter or to rob you for your money or try to rape you or whatever. If it ain't that they trying to shoot you and kill you and take what lint you got in your pockets. And might shoot and kill you, don't get nothing. And then shoot you again because you ain't got nothing. Mm. Made them waste their time. Mm. Give me number two again, please. Verse two. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night. Uh -huh. And wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your way. And get the heck <laughs> out of here. I'm going to try to keep you comfortable. I'm going to bring you into my house. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to try to keep you comfortable. When the sun come up, I need y'all to get the heck out of here. <laughs> I need you all to get out of this city. I need you to depart from this place. I'm talking to angels. I'm talking to angels. That's well equipped to protect themselves, but because of the evil, I want y'all to get the heck out of here. I don't want you to see those things. And they gonna say what? <laughs> give me number three, please. Um. No, give me two. Let me finish two first. Can I make a, a snide comment? <laughs> Go ahead, please. It seems like I can picture a lot being like Eddie Murphy. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, Eddie Murphy is a comedian, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> He's like, no, you can't stay here. You know uh -huh. how Eddie Murphy is. He's like, get the heck out of here. Don't right. don't come back. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. Right. <laughs> Let's go. Just get out of here. You don't want to be here. Right. Um, Genesis 19, verse 2. Uh -huh. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. Uh -huh. 
and tarry all night and wash your feet and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. He said, no, we ain't gonna do those that you ask him. We need to come and see this evil. We have personally come to see this evil. Same thing gonna happen right here at the end of the grace. There's nothing new under the sun. Right here at the end of the grace, the same thing going to take place again. There's going to be a great evil. It's going to be so evil, I, I don't even know how to describe it in words. Not even in the vision. I don't know how to even put this stuff in words what's going to take place. Same thing going to happen all over again. And then, Instead of the angels coming back, Christ coming back. Same thing. Gonna take place again. But when he comes, he coming not with two angels, but with all the angels. Gonna clean house. I'm just trying to get folks out of their wicked way. trying to get you out of your wicked ways on uh, today. Give me another three minutes before we go. Genesis chapter 19 verse 3. And he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. Uh -huh. And he made them a feast and they baked unleavened bread and they did eat. Uh -huh. Verse 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both uh -huh. old and young, all the people from every quarter. Uh -huh. People from all over. All over. We are about to witness the greatest if I could put this vision in words, we are about to witness the greatest defilement of the human body in history. I would have to say this thing gonna be worse than Playboy in the street. You don't need to read, you don't need to battle magazine no more. Magazine will be obsolete. You'll need to be on your internet looking at porn. You ain't gonna need to uh, go in your secret closet and look at your web pages while your husband or your wife in the next room. That's how great this evil is about to get. The closest thing I can think of is Playboy being live in the street. We are witnessing right now people walking around, men naked, putting on their G-strings or whatever the fact they're doing, behind closed doors. But now they're going to come to open doors. You have everybody wearing these black tights. Eventually, you're going to see them truly naked. And that ain't the scary part. You will start seeing these people without their clothes on. That's how ugly little thing going to get. I'm just a messenger. You know how sometimes you say, had a TV on and somebody come on naked and try to put your hand on your child and you don't be able to put your hand on that. You don't be able to do it. 
There won't be too many, there won't be everyone. There won't be the hand of faith. You almost be like Lot trying to keep your daughters. You will be trying to keep your children holy in the midst of those things. Why are you going through this? The greatest defilement of the human body ever on earth. Right at the end of the grace. Right before Christ poured the skies. I hate to give good people bad news. Give me the next verse, please. Then give it to you anyway. My assignment. Genesis chapter 19, verse 5. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which, which came in to thee this night? Uh -huh. Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Uh -huh. Verse 6. That we may what? That we may know them. That we may have what? Sexual intercourse. If you read your Bible enough and you know what know me mean. So we may know them. They want to have sexual intercourse with what we talk about this child now they want to have sexual intercourse with children anything defiant no we want to have sexual intercourse with animals we don't want nothing that's supposed to be according to what Christians say it ought to be we want to have sexual intercourse with the same kind, not a different kind. What do they want? Bestiality. Everything that is defiled. That's all they're looking for. Give me one more minute before I go. Genesis chapter 19, verse 6. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. Uh -huh. Verse 7. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Verse 8. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Uh -huh. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Uh -huh. How would you even keep your children? How are you going to keep your children from being involved? You go on first Corinthians, he said, Woe unto you that are with what? Child. Child. Woe unto you. Woe unto you that are with child. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 real quick. We're going to keep y'all long today. We're just trying to finish up this uh, end of this evil on today. You're about to witness the greatest abomination that make it desolation. If you're trying to talk to a person about trying to keep their temple clean or uh, bottom without spot or wrinkle or garment, it's not even going to be a think of conversation. I didn't even want to talk to you about it. First Corinthians 3.17. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Uh -huh. For the temple of God is holy, uh -huh. which temple ye are. 
This could be the greatest defilement of the things that God is requesting us to be precious about. Our own bodies. We just said that people gonna go from wearing tights to being naked all the way down to showing their private parts openly. I'm showing my private parts openly. You could be in Walmart, somebody could come in the store with what? Naked. Naked and not afraid. Yeah, you got it on your TV, you're watching it. You're okay with watching it, why they keep putting it up there. Because the spirit getting in so many people because of the rating, so it's just giving them an idea of how many people want to be naked and not afraid. Just getting you prepared for the defile the temple of God. It's going to be the worst you ever want to see. Going through the valley of the shadow of death trying to keep your garments white. You're gonna be trying to keep your garments white like Lot did as he was in this valley of the shadow of death. With all those homosexual, with men, women, children, folks sleeping with their dogs, their animals, Sleeping maybe with the animals in the pig pen, in the chicken coop, and got a farm of animals. They just got them to have sex with them. Your cows, your horses, your dogs. Some folks put the dog in the bed, kick the human out the bed. You could go and start talking to a person. They tell you, no, a dog sleep with me on this side right here. No, you can't, you can't sleep in here for a while until the dog is used to you being here. You can't sleep in the bed because the dog sleep on this side. Mm. And you won't be in a relationship with it. These folks want to sleep with angels. They want to sleep with Demons. They want to have a spiritual demon sexual encounter in the end of the grace. Everything is about sexual activity in the end. That's why the Lord had destroyed it for the first time. And the days of what? Noah. And in Solomon and Gomorrah, a sexual perversion. Even the angel came there and made it with the women. Because he got a clean house now. Got to clean those things up. Sexual defilement. Scary. You don't be able to hide your face. Because everybody's so used to seeing folks doing things, they go, ah, oh, it's okay, okay, let them give them an inch. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm gonna be naked. I mean, folks are John, what are you talking about? That stuff ain't gonna happen. And then that's what I said, it didn't happen. <coughs> Let me see Matthew 24, 24. We got one or two more that we're gonna close with this. Just get yourself ready. Get prepared. Matthew 24, 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ uh -huh. and false prophets, 
and shall shew great signs and wonders, uh -huh. insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Uh huh. It's gonna be so much stuff going on. We're gonna come right here to this gift from God worship center. Might be a few folks. We'll come right here to this gift from God worship center. They're gonna be like, John, you might well come on and join with us. Ain't a lot of folk coming to that church. Everybody turned to Satan. Everybody doing the devil. Ain't nobody coming to that church trying to follow Christ. That stuff ain't true. That stuff ain't real. We're going to be right here with the doors of the church open for somebody to walk through that door to say, what shall I do to be saved? That's why we're here. That's why we're going to stay here. Amen. Give me verse 22 real quick before we go. Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. Uh -huh. And except those days should be shortened. Except what? Those days should be shortened. Except those days be shortened, what I'm saying on today. This thing going to be so defiled. This thing going to be so out of order. If those days do not get shortened, he said. What does he say in this? Verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. There will be no flesh saved. They're trying to even convince you, John. Mm -hmm. There will be no flesh saved. They go for every one of them. That's how much you need to stay in a right way, pressing your way to the mark of the high call of God, keeping the mark of God on your forehead, keeping your, like that, keeping your garments, and God forbid if you can keep your children. God forbid if you can keep your children through this thing. It's gonna be difficult. Gonna be difficult. He said they trying to take the very elect of God that know the word. Children better learn the word. How you gonna keep them? How you gonna hold them? You can't hold them. You can't hold them. You can't hold them. I'm gonna be trying to if I could just save myself with my wisdom. And my walk with God, if I could just save myself through those things he's saying. He these things coming out the very elect of God. It's gonna be a great falling away from the church. It's gonna be a great falling away. And those things almost talk like it don't kill who you are. It told that it don't care who you are. Christ said, I have to shorten the days, depart the sky, and return. I have to depart the seventh chart, the seventh seal, the seventh. I got to depart the skies. That's how much I'm trying to tell folks. You need to build yourself up in faith now. Mm -hmm. That's all that COVID was for. Mm -hmm. Increase your faith. Get your faith up. Get that mask off your face. Mm -hmm. Get your faith up so you can be able to walk through this valley that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to pass through this great tribulation. So you'll be able to deal with the seventh seal. Get that mask off your face. You walk by faith through those things. Because if you by faith, you are not going to be saved in those things. Your will, your might, and your power will not make it. It's only by faith that ye say. Read it one more time for go. Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Uh -huh. For who? The elect's sake. They might even try to convince me. 
Try to convince me to walk around naked. Try to convince me, hey John, just go on pot. The Lord ain't coming. He delayed his coming. He ain't coming back. Go on pot and have yourself a good time. Go on enjoy your life while you can. You 65, 50, or whatever. Go on enjoy your life for you for the time for you to go where you gotta enjoy yourself. Come on, we got money, drugs, women, everything you need. Come on, enjoy yourself today. You ain't got to stay in church all day. Come on, enjoy yourself. You ain't got to go up there to the gift from God, worship center every day. Ain't nobody coming over there. Come on, go watch a pot. We're going out and eat, drink. We're going to, hey, we're even going to pay for you. <laughs> we're going to pay for all your stuff today. Just so you can do what? Confess, man. Go put money in your pocket. So you confess, man. They're trying to get the elect of God. Don't worry about nobody else. We got the rest of them. They, behind closed door, we'll show you what they don't. The Lord said, reach to that wall, man of God, so I can show you the abominations. That these holy folks, you claim, you think they holy. Reach in that wall, let me show you the abomination of desolation that these folks doing. You said so holy before me. Scary. Let me read to Matthew 25 real quick before we go. Hopefully this will be my last one. Verse 25. Give me 41. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, uh -huh. Depart from me, ye cursed, mm -hmm. into everlasting fire. Mm -hmm. Prepare for the devil and his angels. How are you going to get prepared for that? When Christ come, how you get prepared for us? They go, Lord said, you gotta walk yourself down a narrow way. You gotta, you gotta, you about to go into an actual spiritual war. Ain't no more talking about, oh, well, he said there are angels and principalities. Ain't no more talking about that. You find this, don't stay down. You quote scripture over. Your quote scripture stuff is over. I don't be coming this gross scripture. I'm trying to tell you what these scriptures say. I'm trying to get folks to apply themselves to themselves. They be thinking I'm quoting scripture. I ain't quoting no scripture. I'm reading scripture trying to tell you what's going to take place in, in before your face. These folks think I'm selling good quote scripture. I'm quoting scripture, all right. I ain't talking about I'm trying to stay in the right way with God. I ain't talking about right way with God. I'm standing in the right way with God. I ain't talking about no quote no scripture. I go down here through these woods, walk around right through here. I ain't talking about just walking through no valley and shine. That's not, I'm gonna do it. I don't go around here quote no scripture, talking about I'm gonna walk through, read some 23rd Psalm. I don't be reading that stuff like folks be reading that stuff. Like, God, these folks don't know what they're talking about. They stand up, hey, we gonna do the Apostle Creed, 23rd Psalm. I'm like sitting in my seat and I said, I'm like, God, these folks don't know what they're talking about. And they went on flee when the, when the COVID came. And get up confess 23rd song. Hey, we these folks don't have a clue what they talk about out their mouth. They ain't never got the face off there. They don't have the face in They up in here talking because they're in a, in a warm, what we call a warm market. Around friends. Quoting the 23rd song. These folks don't know what they talk about their mouth. These folks ain't prepared for nothing. Do you know? Do you know? <laughs> we need to probably go back and recap on every video we done did. Hey, go back and refresh everything now. This stuff's scary. Just to talk, just to get a vision of what these people about to do. It ain't happened yet. And I can hear them saying, Johnny and Bible, do anybody that stupid could come out here naked? Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. They coming out naked. They coming out naked. I thought about the opposite of the Garden of Eden. Uh huh. When Adam and Eve didn't know they was naked. They didn't know they were naked. They don't know they naked because it's sin nature. Mm -hmm. 
the sin is going to be so great. It's going to be so okay. It's going to be so okay. You're going to come out the house and not even think that you're naked because it's going to be so what? Normal. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so normal. You see me come out of the house, you're like, man, when you dressed up, ain't it hot? You're going to be the one that's not normal. I'm going to be the one, I'm, I'm yeah. be the one that ain't going to look right. When you come out with dress, fully dressed. I'll come out with clothes on, everything so long. What's wrong with him? Let's get him, y'all. Mm -hmm. let's, let's chase, let's rip clothes off. <laughs> They're going to run you down and try to rip your clothes off you, so you can be just like them, so you can be naked like them. They're going to chase you down. You got clothes on, you running high, and you think they running for the attack, you know, they might, they gonna try to rip your clothes off so you look like the rest of them. Especially if you try to say you're a Christian. They try to rip your dress off. Slain in the street and the people gonna rejoice. They will kill you if they see you come out there with some clothes on. You come down here to the beach and everybody naked, you got clothes on, you gonna look like, what the world? They gonna look at you and be like, what the world? And I'm going to turn right now, they're going to see that Bible knowledge. They're going to be like, huh? <laughs> oh, he a preacher. He trying to tell us about the most high God. He trying to tell us how we can be saved. They're going to mock me at the beach. They'll mock me if I come down there. But he trying to tell us how we should be saved. He got the Bible belt thing on. I can see a couple of them have my basketball with those I can get away from. <laughs> Give me that 25 one more time before we go. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 42, for I was in hunger and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. Verse 43, I was a stranger and ye took me not in, naked and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison and ye visited me not. Verse 44, then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger or thirst or a stranger or naked or sick? or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Verse 45, Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Mm -hmm. Verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Something I don't know what to say. But sometimes, what do you do? I don't know. I just, I guess I just got to wait for the Holy Ghost. Just let him do his work. Mm -hmm. Like he said, you just a plant. Mm -hmm. you, sometimes you might get to plant and water, mm -hmm. but you definitely don't get to get an increase. Mm -hmm. That's God part. So we can only come here and do our part. And that's going to go to a few folks that ain't going throughout the whole world because somebody else in some of the other places. You might get 15, 20 views, 30, sometimes 50, sometimes 100, maybe 200, sometimes 500,000. They're just a few folks. Mm -hmm. But hey, the angel of the Lord said every joy for just one soul say so. Mm -hmm. As long as I continue to come here and do my part what thus says the Lord, then way of doing that good and faithful service. That's one thing which he just read that we have to remember as Christians. Mm -hmm. When you did not do it to the least of them. Mm -hmm. If I don't come in here and do what I'm supposed to do, I'm doing it to Christ. He has given me a ministry to preach the gospel. Yes, dear, I don't go and do it. So now, because I haven't went and done it, I did it to him and left them naked because I didn't go do my work. 
So that's one thing a lot of ministers need to keep their mind on. Don't worry about how many people in front of you. Don't worry about your memo count. Worry about completing your assignment. You're only a planner or maybe a warrior. Very rare you might get the plan and warrior. But you still can't say if the person understood what you're talking about. But it's still up to God to give the increase. Mm -hmm. That's his part. Another thing the Lord has said to me that if, if we can get people to to change their speech or, you know, like renew their mind when it comes to correction, uh -huh. instead of them, you know, responding, like, you know, people always say, don't judge me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like if they look at it as not judgment, but as correction, because like you had ministered before, you know, your type of lifestyle can get you into the, the fire, mm -hmm. into the fire pit. It right. can get you there. So don't look at it as somebody judging you. It's offering you correction because right. we, we see your faults. And sometimes we don't we don't always see our faults. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes somebody else to sometimes come to us and say, we see this thing about you. We saw that you were doing this thing and it's not in the right way with the Lord God. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's our responsibility, you know, to minister to our brothers and sisters as well as our brothers and sisters minister to us. You know, how else can we stay in the right way if we don't keep each other accountable, you know, for the things that we do and for the type of lifestyles that we that we live. You know, because just like you were saying this morning, you know, we got to constantly remind ourselves, you know, about the Lord God, to keep the Lord God in our, in our forefront, to keep mm -hmm. him first, you know, in all that we do. It's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. He even gave me a scenario. So if, if I had like a friend, if I had a friend and she was cheating on her husband, do I stand by knowing that she's doing this thing that's out of order with God? Do I not say something? Mm -hmm. And then if I say something to have her respond, you know, don't not with don't judge me, but mm -hmm. thank you for the correction, mm -hmm. you know, for bringing me for getting me, reeling me back in or something to that mm -hmm. effect. You know, so don't be offended, you know, when, when your brother and sister is trying to keep you in the right way because we sometimes we need that motivation, we need that push, we need that help, we need that minister, we need that counseling, we we need those things. Yeah, well, at the end times, they're going to say, stay out of my business mm -hmm. and mind your own business mm -hmm. and get your own house in order. Don't worry about my house. Keep your own house in order. Mm -hmm. That's going to be their conversation. Mm -hmm. End times, stay out of my business, man, your own business. Mm -hmm. That's going to be their response. Mm -hmm. Then somebody going to bear witness to that. They're going to come and say, John, they say exactly that. Mm -hmm. They say, stay out of my business, and man, your own business. So now you got two options. Either I can I can talk with you about about the thing, or uh -huh. I can go and gossip with some other people about it. So yeah. which one would you rather me do? Just keep it between us and talk about it, or would you rather me go out and, and gossip about it? With well, other you going to be under the, the thing of the gospel, the gossip mm -hmm. under the list. Yeah, exactly. So you can't go out and gossip about it. You can just talk to them about it. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. The person Would a person rather you talk to them or talk about you to somebody else? Right. So I'm saying if, if it was me, if it was me, I would rather for my friend to talk to me instead of talking mm -hmm. about me. Right. <sighs> Bless the Lord. All is well. All is well. <laughs> we here to do our part on today. Bless the Lord, God. We just thank the Lord for giving us uh, a place of worship. Mm -hmm. We thank the Lord, God. So we have to use the place for worship. So we just thank the Lord for all that he allowed us to do here that we might be able to save a few folks. Few folks. Even if it's not a whole bunch of folks, maybe just a few folks. Mm -hmm. And that'll be our portion mm -hmm. under the sun. Mm -hmm. But you see, actually said, that's your portion. Mm -hmm. If it's five folks, mm -hmm. the Lord bless you with a bill of home 50,000. If you save five folks, mm -hmm. that's your portion on this song. Thank you, Lord.
Praise the Lord today. Praise the Lord God. We just continue to just keep pressing towards the mark of the head call of God. I miss you prayer often. Bless you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We bless you and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your word that you brought forth today, Lord God. We thank you that we continue to get wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Lord God, that you continue to lead, guide, and guide us, Lord God. Bless our hands, Lord God, that we are able to give back just a little bit, Lord God, of what you have already given to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your provisions. We thank you, Lord God, that you make a way. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our provider. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our everything, Lord God, and we thank you for the offerings that we're receiving on this day, Lord God, for the continued building of this ministry, Lord God, and for the continued building of the body of Christ, Lord God. We bless you and give you all thanks, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise. Nail unto him that is able to keep us from falling. Lord, we thank you again, Lord God, that you bring us back here once again, Lord God, that we might return, Lord God, to give what does say the Lord to thy people. So, Lord God, we are waiting in victory. We are waiting in victory over the enemy, Lord God. And I also thank you for your Holy Ghost Spirit, Lord God, to continue to cover us, Lord God, from one end of the earth, Lord God, over to the other. And we thank you. Lord God, we thank you for all that you have done and will do through these times of trouble. That you will keep our heads of protection over us, Lord God, as you did with your servant Job. We ask it right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, that you also put that edge of protection, Lord God. Also, Lord God, around our children, Lord God, from one end of the earth, Lord God, over to the other. We also pray for all the saints, all those who are and all those that will be on today. And we thank you again in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Praise We are dismissed by saying, praise ye the Lord. Praise, praise ye, ye the, the Lord. Lord. Bless the Lord, praise God.